We wanted to talk a bit more about women in STEM. So Lisa is back, as well as Dr. Marjorie Dixon, and we also have CityLine correspondent Lauren Howe with us. <laughs> Some people don't, but you are an engineer uh, by training. You've also won a few very high-profile pageants. Mm -hmm. So it's like people know <laughs> both sides of you. The Miss Canada, Miss U is it Miss Universe as well? Yeah, the Miss Universe Canada. And then Miss you go Universe on Canada, the Miss Universe. and then also engineer. Engineering graduate from U of T. Engineering graduate from U of T. I feel Give like it up Lauren Hatt. It's not, it's not something we come across um, as much as we would like to, and so we thought we would take all three of you that have been in these industries that are mostly predominantly male um, and talk a little bit about what it's been like being a woman in your field. If someone learns about my engineering background, almost the first question they ask is like, wow, you must have been the only woman in your field. Were you? In your program. I would, you know what, I'm fortunate, and when I joined University of Toronto, they announced that this was the record-breaking number of females at 33%. Ooh. That was in 2000, ugh, I'm gonna date myself. Um, I wanna take a guess and say 2012. Okay. And most recently I was back at the school speaking and they said they were at 49%. Wow. Ooh. Is it that we're just getting, we're understanding that more women need to be going into these fields or women are taking yeah. an interest in these fields more? Like, what do you think it is? I think it's a combination. And we were talking about this beforehand of, on one hand, you definitely, there's, there's a bigger conversation yeah. for a need to have female representation in STEM, science, engineering, technology, math. But also, a lot of it is coming from the parents. Mm -hmm. and being supportive of saying, get into these industries. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's, that's half the battle of just having that support network, whether it's from your family, whether it's especially from bosses as well, that yes. lift you up. Mm -hmm. and, and include you, sort of include a seat at the table. Marjorie, I want to talk to you a little bit about the difficulties, um, and not to be a downer, but I know it's not easy to be alone. It's not easy to be the only one. It's not easy to be a, a minority in a situation where everyone else is different from you. So have you encountered a few difficulties being a woman in a man's traditionally man's immense old, field? Tracy. <laughs> Where do we begin? Where do we begin? But I, I have to say that we have to flip the conversation because mm -hmm. having female representation at the table like this in science, technology, engineering, uh, medicine, we're worth thinking about the intersection of all of this because women, I say that we are the ultimate in the multitask. And when we talk about STEM, it's integrating all of these things together, applying it to cooking applying STEM to, to medicine and science technology, we see it there, but applying it to how bicycles are made, applying it to the basic things. You find your passion and then you think outside of your box and integrate these pieces of knowledge. I was that kid who loved calculus. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, right? What like do you I, think that's about? Do you get that from anyone, I get, well, your mom, I get, your dad? Well, my dad. My dad was a, a reproductive biology teacher and scientist. He taught physics. Okay, so physics, I did not like physics. Yeah. But it didn't stop, it didn't prevent me from going further into medicine, science, technology, research, business. We are the ultimate multitaskers, and our brains fit in that collaborative, how do we integrate what we're doing? Mm -hmm. And that is what drives a lot of young women and girls to do extra things. And when they see female mentors, I think mm -hmm. that's where it changes. And also for me raising my sons, and this is what I was saying too before, like we're raising feminist men mm -hmm. because they see us go, and then they would expect that this is the normal way yeah. for women to behave and explore, that it shouldn't be exclusively men. So 49% awesome, we should have been there. Right? Like, totally. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, Hi. if you could talk to young girls right now, um, what, would you, what would you say to them about getting into STEM? Okay, so I was not like Marjorie. Yeah. I, I did not like physics. Yes. I did not like <laughs> math. In fact, I didn't have very much confidence in those areas. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to young girls is there is really an importance behind being brave. We don't always need to focus on being perfect and having the perfect mm -hmm. result every mm -hmm. single time mm -hmm. we try something. It's okay to try mm -hmm. and fail and start again and fail and start again. It, this is mm -hmm. all part of what STEM is all about. It's going mm -hmm. back to the drawing board until you find that magical moment mm -hmm. where there is a solution. Mm -hmm. So really, I mean, let's put perfectionism aside for a second yeah. and let's embrace our femininity. Can you do it, right? But you're right. Like, out of 
diversity comes opportunity. Absolutely. Right? That's the scientific process. Exactly. You critically appraise what you're doing. Yeah. It's exactly what you said. Like, you find a problem, you make a hypothesis. You don't be afraid to critically appraise it. You design your experiment or whatever you run in life. You figure it out, you share your results, and you move from there. Exactly. Right? And, like, and really right. use your passion as well. Because we yeah. all have a gift. And really, the world needs that gift. So let's find yes. a way to get it out there. I like how you broke down the psychology. It's true. we got to be willing to fail. Mm. And that's yeah. what the world of science is about. And that's how you move forward. Thank you so yeah. much to all three of you. We love you to pieces. <laughs>